Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to game number one in group A of, I believe, our seventh newcomer tournament. Up in this first match, we've got Vosh Scoobadoo 2, like his name, Sudoku, and Boat Shoe. So, you know, just a fantastic set of names here. Philothanic is here with Hello. me doing some casting as well. And, uh, well, it looks like we're being a little bit generous with the first map out, if I'm being honest. You think a bit light on so, iron. but the problem is all the waters in this top left corner. And other Who's than that? Nomad, I suppose you've got two things. There's this nuke, so you could go an expansive and ship the one iron in, but you got to be worried about the nuke. You could go Nomad right up here in this water. Silicon patch would actually be quite nice. Or everything else, you're going to be further away from the water than you would like. There's a scavenger in the top right corner next to decent carbon and near enough to some water, but only low aluminum. So there's really nothing that's like... It's deceptingly good looking. Now, Vosh is going to go dry for the Dry Ice, ice Scavenger, which scavenger. normally is a ticket to losing, and I do not recommend it. I, I think this would also be one of those times, if I'm being honest. Scuba Doo 2 hasn't landed yet, but so far we've got two expansives and a scavenger. I like Boat Shoes' spot best, if I'm honest. You've still got access to good water, you've got access to some iron. I might have found it a little to the east myself, uh, considering Assigned there's geotherm the over there, and maybe we can use that. But overall, I mean, he should be in an okay spot to get something done this game. Right, yeah, overall decent decent location for Bochu, close enough to some water, has some iron adjacent in case he gets new next to a geotherm, so it could do something with the geothermal boreholes or tents, potentially. Um, steel did start at half, so his steel mills are off already. Doku? Studoku. Uh, Studoku. That's what I'm. Studoku. Studoku. Like HQ2, it. along with Vosh, also HQ2. Um, Sudoku, I think, has my favorite found so far. The only problem with it is it's going to be a little bit cramped in between these craters, especially with those extra territory uh, claims that the expansive has. Yeah, I don't. It's all right. I mean, it's got okay access to aluminum. It's got okay iron. The, the cheap steel at the start kind of helps it out because it lets him get into this food market without too much trouble. But I think, I don't think any of the players did what I probably would have done this game. I really like the idea of going for a scavenger spot, so with some really nice carbon and just relying on the fact that you had Kim, a uh, Kim colony. You know Scooby-Doo I mean? is lives. where you should have gone for a scavenger. So when you're rewatching this Scooby-Doo, first of all, two things. A, do not build single production tiles by themselves. They, uh, you don't use the adjacency bonus. And then, um, B, this would have been much better to found as a scavenger because you got that high and a low carbon right there. Sure, your aluminum isn't the greatest, but you can do two tiles and they're right next to your base and you can switch them around to somewhere else. And then you got silicon and water just to the south of you. Everything a growing scavenger colony needs. Oh boy. This turned off high elemental quarry for Bosch. He's just working on these solar condensers and we're about to encounter yet another reason why Dry Ice Scavenger is not a recommended thing to do because that dust storm is rolling in in about nine seconds. Yeah, the only And when you spent four tiles on this, oh, that's going to be painful. The only time you can get away with a Dry Ice Scavenger is when you're in a new player's tournament and you're competing against Black Magic tiles from the scientist over here. But I still yeah, like Boat Shoe's spot overall, though. I mean, like, that's scary. That's still... That might be enough to take the Dry Ice Scavenger down, if I'm yes. being honest. Yes, no, if Boat Shoe... Boat Shoe's, uh, already has more money than the Dry Ice Scavenger does. Um, actually has enough to upgrade if they want, so upgrade. beating the Scavenger, that's never a place you want to be as a Scavenger. Vosh needs another math on stream. 5k for the upgrade. Extra claim auction going to 28,000 to... Sudoku. I want to say Sudoku, right. but that's not correct. But it's Stu-Doku. 32 is a bit high. It is, but you it's can not kind terrible. of absorb it this time. I mean, it's not terrible. The, the downside is it kind of locks you out of that potential power market in some ways anytime soon, which is often something you want to watch out for in these kind of new player situations. But bright side, Bosch is spending almost no power. I would uh, say that going Scooby-Doo is spending almost no power, you know. For the geotherm so. early would have been a bad plan, but the geotherm only costs 4k, so Boat Shoe still has the upgrade to HQ3 once they realize they have enough cash. 
There we go. Well, the best thing the ever from Bo Chu was that uh, that water shortage. Although I don't think he got the benefit off of it. I mean, I'd imagine it was probably Vosh who pulled that off, given that he has almost no water in storage right now. But it would have given him a nice little little leap ahead. Either way, though, both these players are going to be headed to three. Scooby-Doo has gotten two, so that's that Scooby-Doo. That is a good step in the right direction. Is Scooby still at HQ one? Oh, is he? Oh, no, he is at one. I was seeing his cash. No, that's, that's yeah, fair. It's, it's, I expected it to be two by two now. Two Sudoku is at two. No, you're absolutely HQ right. But you can see whenever. the big problem with these black magic tiles that require inputs. It's just ugh. Yeah, the black magic tile, if you're not familiar, is the Artosis Pylon of Offworld Trading Company. It's one production building by itself without adjacency bonus. Two, pr two production buildings next to each other in the same type gives a 50% bonus to each building, so that's three individual tiles worth of production for only two tiles worth of input. It's very good to use adjacency bonuses. Yep. Or 5.25. If you have a full triangle, as we're going to see out of a Oshu in just a moment here. He's also got a patent lab coming up. Nothing queued up for that just yet, but we'll see what he does with it in just a moment. He has plenty of cash for this, that's for sure. So I'm kind of curious what he's going to what he's going to be up to. Yeah, Bochu definitely going in a good situation. like to see Bochu buy a green squad, place it on top of this patent lab, because we do have plenty of offensive black market items there. Wouldn't want Vosh interfering or Studoku interfering with the plan for the patents, but when you do build a patent lab, you do need to have a plan. Okay, teleportation is going on. Teleportation is one of those patents that new players overvalue. Yeah, usually. It's very good. It is good. It's just not quite as good as a lot of newer players think it is. That said, because because newer players don't value as heavily the idea of being able to rotate buildings and putting them next to your base, they often end up with more tiles away from your base, and then that increases the value of teleportation, and you know, things get interesting. The Pleasure Dome should be nice and valuable this game, by the way. Yes, the best default patent, in many players' opinion, if you don't know what to take, is nanotechnology. If you don't so know what good. to take, nano is always a good choice because it allows you to get back the construction materials when you are rotating buildings. So if you find yourself in this situation where you're like, I built a patent lab, what patent lab should I get? Nanotech's a good default to start out with because you can't go wrong with it, no matter what the situation is. Yeah, nanotech is absolutely fine. Kind of also up there is often carbon scrubbing just because... Yes that peace of mind of not having to worry about carbon if you don't absolutely have to that was actually worth it for scuba-doo in like every way imaginable yes scuba-doo needs for that all budget. the income that they need just to get into this game they need 12k for the upgrade have 9k so they're slowly getting there need to put up i mean the pleasure dome's gonna rocket them there almost immediately at 250 per second you know the only problem is they'll be in HQ2 while Bochu right here should be having a very strong opening. HQ4, uh, both Studoku and Vosh need to use some of this cash they have to attack Bochu here with the black market. 3k EMPs, 2k slowdown strikes, 2k dynamites. There's plenty of op options that you could attack Bochu with. Just, I love the I mean, I really think that a strong move earlier this game would have been to nuke out some of Bochu's aluminum. He was relying on these close aluminum tiles. They're not the best nukes in the world, but that's where a lot of his straight cash has been coming from, is this excess flow of aluminum that he's had this entire time. And aluminum stayed very valuable simply because uh, studoku has been moving through upgrades and he didn't take it for a while. And it was the same situation with Bosch. I don't believe Bosch picked it up until HQ3. All so right. all those things combined meant it was a nice market for Bochu. So Bochu doing lots of good things until right then and there. Using the, uh, what was it? The, um, mutiny on Studoku's Geotherm when a Spies 4.5k. No need to give free black market to your opponent when Spies are that cheap. Just pop a Spy down there and check out. Same with, uh, Studoku trying to mutiny back boat shoes patent lab same story spies are so cheap there's no need to absolutely gift your opponent a black market item Vosh is in hq4 lagging going ahead of studoku who for some reason hasn't upgraded 60k in the bank definitely can upgrade they just need to sell some of the sell down the food, food here yeah 
Is anybody else in yeah, food? That's the thing. Yes. So here's a good rule of thumb for new players. Perhaps a if the order. price of an item is rising or and or no one else is in that market, the rule of thumb is hold it. If the price is falling and or somebody else like Boat Shoe is in the market, you should auto sell it. No, I will say in this situation, I like holding despite the fact that Boat Shoe is in the market because if you just take Boat Shoe, not a whole lot of food production there. I mean, a yeah. lot of that's going to his life support and the ha habitats will eat up the rest. And so the price should still be rising. But generally speaking, if there's an excess in the market, you absolutely should be selling down. So like once Scuba Doo has his farms up in just a moment. Right, so this is why it's a rule of thumb because yeah. Boat Shoe is producing, but two tiles, not quite enough for an HQ4. Once that third comes down and that third, that those pairs are going. So Studoku should be looking at Scuba Doo's tiles and Boat Shoe's tiles and now start auto selling. Another good rule of thumb, if you can upgrade without being at risk of getting bought out, do it immediately, almost no matter what else is happening. Correct. Um, uh, for new players especially, just make sure you're always hitting that upgrade button the more you possibly could. Sell down whatever you have to to get there. Um, another thing, if you, somebody else is in uh, HQ2 at D plus one debt, they're usually a decent pickup. Buy them! Buy them! Now, in Although, our like, new players Scooby-Doo has so much yeah. money. Scooby-Doo <laughs> could defend themselves, so not going into them. Scooby-Doo right now is fine. You might want to wait till Scooby-Doo hits that upgrade button. Although uh, Scooby-Doo here, once again, needs or this to debt tick. auto sell some things. The chems that are coming in, the food that's coming in, just so we can turn that they can turn that cash into money. But speaking of money, Vosh HQ4 actually has more cash on hand than either Studoku or Bochu, despite going into the Solar Condenser scavenger play. Yeah, he's had the, the chem refineries up, and so that's been nice for him. And of course, Boat Shoe has been spending some of this money, picking up tools like nanotech, teleportation. He's also been buying black market items, so that all makes sense. That said, I didn't like Boat Shoe's upgrade just there because we've hit one of the exceptions, which is Scooby-Doo is just so exceedingly cheap. Even with defending themselves, Scooby-Doo is so ridiculously right. cheap. It would take Boat Shoe 169 right now to pick him up. That is not a lot of cash. And that's going to rapidly decrease right now. It's probably going to, what is the target share price here? $7. Seven oh six. So yeah, yeah, that's going to go all the way down to 140k pickup here. So that's somewhere Black where if Vosh is on their game, they can be looking at that make that pickup and then this dry ice scavenger spot won't be a hindrance going into the late game. Oh boy, I'm still worried about the Darius scab, and you can see why at this point. Upgrade. Bosch wants to get to that upgrade. He wants to keep moving through tech. He might want to build an off-world later in this game, because food in particular is looking quite valuable, but carbon at $150 a piece right now. He has a measly 54 carbon stockpile patent lab auction. Vaguely interesting. We'll see what happens with that. But it would cost him $121,000 to upgrade right now. That's absurd. That's an absurd way too low for a patent lab. I was expecting that to take a little while longer. Immediately into thinking machines, Vosh, I don't like that at all. Because once again, those off worlds, I mean, decent priced off worlds, 31K profit launches for both water and food, but Vosh getting to those off worlds is going to be so challenging, especially if the expansives start EMPing the solar condensers, which would be a great thing for them to do. Meanwhile, yeah, Scooby-Doo nice really needs to upgrade. They're sitting on so much cash. You need to sell down so much food. Money. Don't wait for the resources to tick down. You can buy the resources with your cash to upgrade. But finally, HQ3, and then a Boat Shoe 5 with an off-world on the way. Where is that off-world? That off-world's going to be nice. Frozen. Thinking Machine's on the way. He's not going to get it, though. Bosch with the defended patent lab, he does pick up thinking machines ahead of time. Yep, frozen off world at 0%. Seven seconds till that gets started again. Come on, Scooby Doo, upgrade. So this is when this is when Scooby Doo starts really falling out of things. In just All right, a D here. plus three interest tick right here at $67,000 of interest. The new target share price is 69688 It just went down again. Yep. So under right, $7. Right here, Boat Shoe. The heads up play 
it would be to cancel this off world and put that mm-hmm. money towards picking up Scooby Doo. Yeah, you can get so now, much secured there. The Although other hand, Vosh is going to make Bochu not think about that, and it's understandable why Bochu may no longer think about that option. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Hmm. Studoku, hmm. who we haven't talked about recently, is a uh, HQ financial four instruments. Well. Needs 107. Wait, look. Sorry, looking at Vosh. Sorry, Studoku only needs 68k <laughs> to upgrade. I'm like, that's a little bit high. 107. Uh, isn't it any steel? Bit high, but it's still Vosh's situation, which is really not good. Yeah, I mean, you could go without steel for such a long time this game. Studoku started out with a couple of the steel mills, but he was willing to rotate out of them. But we're kind of past that phase of the game. I mean, the scientist isn't making steel at all. Bochu hasn't gone completely excessive with the steel production. Plus, he's moving into off-worlds and has one up already. Launching water, strangely enough. That is the profitable launch right now. $40 water. And so you just have to get that steel down at some point. Right, and this is one of those good places where we can illustrate one of those concepts in Offworld that's kind of hard to pick out until someone points it out to you, is the hidden price of steel after the upgrade. Look at that price jump in the graph there. So yeah, steel wasn't that good before Studoku bought, but the reason why you produce it is because otherwise after you upgrade it's going to become really good. 71 for it dollars a second for an unoptima unadjacent steel mill 138 with adjacency that's money that studoku potentially fed into bochu's hands except that bochu's going straight in the double off world so it doesn't matter yeah, if Bochu, I mean, even with that, the double, that's 400 steel that he's sunk into there. That's a fair amount of steel, but he's had, he's actually had quite a lot saved away, especially considering that he's had nanotech this whole time. So that he's had even this small bit of steel production has been, has been quite enough for Bochu to get his work done. And you're all right. It's one of those things that's kind of difficult to understand. Once you've been playing for a while, you start to get the idea of hidden supply. When someone has a lot of resources saved up and they can crash the price, at any given moment because, well, they have a lot of resources saved up. That's easy, you can get that, but hidden demand is one of those way more interesting topics. Finally, here we go. We've Players got a run on Studoku. Are going into Studoku. I mean, sorry, Scooby-Doo. Being bought into by Studoku and Vosh. And here comes the interest tick. So Studoku has the buy right now. They need to click that red buy button. They need to sell down stuff so they can click that red buy button. There's a red so buy button. Here Hit it comes. It. Click it. Come on. You can do it. it. You've got claims. it. Just take it. Yeah. All right. So that's actually a really big pickup for Sudoku because he was kind of running behind Bosch and Bochu, in my opinion, for most of this game. But now suddenly we're in a position where Bochu, with maybe a little bit of a misallocation of his cash into Bosch's stocks, has let Sudoku get that pickup, get that subsidiary. It's not a great subsidiary, but you can see just the sheer difference in stock price. Even though most of Studoku's stock is unowned, his price is very high, and even with his large amount of debt. Right. Now, Scooby-Doo, once again, we did talk about this earlier, but if Scooby-Doo is just tuning into the stream after being bought out, this would have been a great scavenger spot. There wasn't any way to really to force a scientist in this location. And then uh, when you did, you had the uh, single black magic tiles and weren't using adjacency. He needed to commit, you know, either to two cam refineries or two glass kilns, not one of each. Still would have been hard, but it would have been much easier. Look at this glass money, though. It's so good. Yes. Superconductor for 9,000. That's a really nice pickup for Vosh. He's just had these couple of wind turbines running for quite a while, and those are, those are going to do him plenty from this point moving forward with Superconductor. We do have optimization centers on the board, and we do have two of them. Bochu going into one themselves, Studoku with one just a little bit earlier, and honestly, optimization centers probably should have been built a little while ago. There are so many prices here north of $200 that optimi- optimizing even just one or two pips into a few of them would have such a good payoff over the rest of the game. The engineers have advanced our production. So. 
I just want to look at the stock game right now, because in my opinion, what Bochu really needs to do is sell out of Vosh and just move into Studoku, and he Correct. should be in a spot to go ahead and take the game. If he takes out Studoku, he gets all of his stock back at that point, because Studoku owns all of it, and he'll be in a good position. Bosch, meanwhile, is no threat whatsoever. Bosch has no cash. Bosch is not a danger in any way for the time being. He does not need to worry about getting Bosch eliminated, especially because Bosch has almost no ability to properly move into off world to this game as he has been a dry ice scavenger the entire time. Looks like Bochu is going to pick him up regardless. Right, so that was a unnecessary chance that Bochu gave Sudoku to get back in this game. Mm hmm. And it's all about the stock play right here. Because Sudoku was able to move into Scuba Doo at the right time, identified the correct stock purchase. He put himself in a good spot with stock price because he identified I can move into Boat Shoe because Boat Shoe hasn't defended himself and is unnecessarily in Bosch. I can make purchases there and get myself an advantage in this area of the game too. And now Studoku is way ahead in a situation where there was really no excuse for it. With way ahead Boat in had the, simply stock done the stock market. Game, yes, but Studoku, which is how you win. But Studoku has less late game money-making opportunity. Scooby-Doo's not making that much cash, although finally at HQ5 as a scientist means the cash will start it's, flowing it's, in. It's glass money. It's, it's flowing in. It's farms are flowing in. These reactors going to be profitable. I mean, it's coming. Yeah, no. No, it started coming faster than I thought it would. So Bochu does look like they may have snatched defeat from the Jaws of Victory with that purchase into Vosh. Bochu just needs to sink all the cash into Stodoku to raise their stock price as fast as possible. Yep, they have a chance absolutely. at winning this here off of the awful markets. Because I do agree with you that over an extremely long period of time, Bochu has the advantage, right? He's got the off-worlds down, he's expansive, as well as Tudoku. Those are great things to have, to have these off-worlds in particular and have all these claims. But at the end of the day, you just might not have enough time to exploit all those things because Tudoku, he only needs about 250,000 more to end this game, even once Bochu's price is risen. Yep. Now... Yeah, the cash just started flowing in faster for Sudoku than I thought it would all of a sudden jumping up a good 100k there in cash on hand. So it looks like in this race, 69%, 70% to 19% Sudoku is going to come out with a win, taking advantage of Boat Shoes' mistakes in the stock game and Sudoku just having a all-around, I'd say, until the late game, second best performance so far. So that's one of the things about Offworld in these FFAs is just because you seem like you're behind, you're not necessarily out of it yet. Somebody else may make a mistake, and then that's your opportunity. Yeah, I do potentially want to see a rotation at Goku here, and there's this concern that he's been operating off of this metal mine, this one metal mine this whole time. He's which still got some nuked. steel production down. Yeah, I mean, we could have core sampled a little bit more. Just pretty easily. Core say, samples were on the board this game, and yes. nobody used a single one. And then that was a mistake, definitely out of Vosh, probably out of Studoku as well. Yeah, Vosh over here would have a decent chance of popping up at least like a medium carbon in this... Mm -hmm. uh, near those lows. Near yeah. those lows, and then these solar condensers next to Vosh's base could be transferred into something that would actually make money instead of, you know, poor upgrading material. Yeah, yeah, the, the solar condensers, after a long time, they're just killer, having to rely on them for so, so long. You're not going to get the work done. It is turning out to be very close over here in the race. I mean, Bochu even extends it just a little bit further by getting that one free stock that was left in Scooby-Doo. But unfortunately, I mean, Scooby-Doo is making a lot of cash. Vosh, meanwhile, as a subsidiary, got this off-world market online, finally. Yeah. But... Studoku is a little bit in overextended in the food here. Could go into electronics yeah. as a market that would make money. So there would are ways for Studoku to make this uh, less close than it needs to be, and they're not doing that. The other thing is they have that 100%, but they have such a large stockpile that they may not know that they have 100%. So they have the game won. Hopefully they don't lose oh, the game by not realizing. Oh, here we go that they have it in hand. Starting to sell everything down, Studoku takes the buy, a well-earned victory over Bochu. Bochu playing well, quite well also. Always good to see these 
new players play well in these games. Room for improvement across the board for everyone, though. Lots of little things. Black market prices are so, so low right now. Yeah. Nukes at 2K, Slowdown Strikes at 10K, Dynamites at 10K. But overall, reasonably well done. Scuba Doo with the uh, with the black magic tiles on the scientist found that was that was the biggest thing that probably needed to be improved here. And Vosh hopefully has learned a lesson about dry ice gav. It's not yeah, real. Do it's it. not a thing. Can't do it. Despite do it. despite Hexapus saying it's a thing, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Don't do it. I feel Trust like me. Mean Girls. I tried. <laughs> It'll never be a thing. Can't make it's it not one. A thing. Never. Can't do it. Let's take a look at the charts and graphs. See if there's anything interesting that we can see here. About you making 707k off world. Right there, they didn't buy Vosh, they would have won the game. 707k is easily enough to win an FFA game in Offworld Trading Company if you play that stock market correctly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it was just it was just purely good. And I understand what happened with Boat Shoe was looking like the dangerous one for a while. On top of that, Bosch kind of poked the bear and was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some of Boat Shoe stock. Oh, never mind. The boat shoe was laser focused from that point forward, and unfortunately, being laser focused to the point where you get tunnel vision from uh, everything else, that can that can be your demise pretty easily in an FFA game. Yeah, and to be to be fair to boat shoe, while the AI in off world's pretty decent, the stock game is not one of those areas where the AI is decent at all. So the stock only so complicated. The only way to get good at the stock game is to play the stock game with real people and making these mistakes. And we've all been there before. 